Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Seagull Fall Sports Preview. My name is Paul O'Hanion and we're going to spend the next few minutes previewing each of the upcoming fall sports teams here at Salisbury University. Before we get started with each of the teams, we're joined, however, by Director of Athletics, Dr. Mike Vienna, who's going to give us a brief overview of some of the highlights from last year and uh, talk about a couple of things that might be uh, upcoming for the, uh, for the new sports year. Mike, uh, glad to have you with us. Thanks, Paul. My and, pleasure. And, um, you know, Salisbury University enjoyed an outstanding 2000-2001 uh, sports year. Some people know about it, some people don't. Maybe uh, you could share some of the highlights in your mind from the past year. Well, I might be a little bit biased, but arguably I think we had maybe the finest year in Seagull history coming off. It was highlighted the 15th place in the Sears Directors' Cup, which ranks Division Three institutions on an overall basis. And we were 15th out of uh, approximately 400 institutions. And then, as well, we won the Capital Athletic Conference All-Sports Award for the third straight year, and that was certainly a highlight. And then on top of that, what most people don't know and you don't read about in the paper is our student athletes perform very well in the classroom. So we're doing it on the field and in the classroom. I know you take great pride in the academic achievement of our student athletes. We have uh, over 400 student athletes combined fall, winter, and spring. And you always talk about some of the benefits to being an athlete as well as a student. Maybe you can share some of those things about uh, grade point averages and those types of things that our students achieve. Well, one of the benefits of being a student athlete here at Salisbury is that uh, it is a very demanding athletics program. So if one's going to be involved, they're going to have to develop some time management skills. And the proof has been in the pudding academically. Over half of our student athletes achieved over a 3.0 or higher during the last semester. We do comparison studies as well to the rest of the student body. And consistently, the student body performs as well, if not better. The student athletes perform better uh, than the rest of the student body, usually in terms of grade point average. Probably the most significant one, though, is the student athletes have a significantly higher graduation and retention rate here than when compared to the student body. People probably wonder, well, what, uh, what does the director of athletics do during the summer? What do you do to help prepare for the, for the new year? Maybe you can give us a, a, a brief glimpse into um, the, some of the things that uh, come across your desk. Well, uh, for the summer, it's, it gets busier and busier with the success we have. What a lot of people don't realize is when the dust settles and the successful spring that we had last year, there's still about a three or four weeks worth of paperwork that the NCA requires. But on top of that, we start trying to wrap up things from the previous year, prepare for the upcoming year. We hired coaches in the off season, uh, get things ready as far as schedules, officials assignments, and preseason as we have going on behind us, getting all those ducks in a row. So you're ready to go? I'm ready to go. I don't know if I'm going to win any ball games, but I'm certainly am very hopeful that our teams are going to. Excited, optimistic? I think uh, if you look at the caliber of the student athletes that we have coming back, you know, the sophomores, juniors, and seniors in our program who have been a part of this successful program, I think we're going to have another outstanding year. And our coaching staff, we've got a great coaching staff. That Those two things coupled together, I'm, I'm ready to go. I mean, we're all undefeated right now, so I'm a happy guy. Well, we'll have each of the coaches come through now and tell us a little bit uh, about their teams. And uh, we thank you for taking a few minutes. And uh, we'll be right back. We'll start the previews with head coach Sherman Wood of the Seagull football team. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Seagull Fall Sports Preview. We're joined now by head football coach Sherman Wood, who's beginning his third year back at his alma mater. Uh, Sherman was an All-American defensive back here in the early to mid-80s and is now uh, back as the head coach beginning year number three. Coach, glad you could join us. Oh, I'm glad to be here, no doubt about it. Uh, as, uh, as we tape this, uh, Coach Wood has had his team in camp for uh, about two weeks with preseason, and maybe, Coach, as we get started, you can give us a... Uh, uh, review on how preseason's gone. Well, I got to tell you, Paul, I, I've been extremely pleased with preseason thus far. Uh, we, we did start off with quite a few young people, but, uh, uh, you know, we had 12 days of preseason. Uh, practice went well. Uh, we felt that we was ahead of the game from last year. Uh, we felt we probably about a practice ahead than last year as far as putting our schemes and philosophy in. And uh, the kids have adjusted real well, and they caught on real fast, too. Uh, we finished up with... Uh, what a good solid scrimmage against Western Maryland, which is a nationally ranked football team. Uh, we wanted to see how we 
we fare against those type of kids, and, and we did fairly well. So I, I was pretty pleased about preseason, and we're just, just getting ready for Christopher Newport at this time. Well, we'll take a few minutes, maybe run through some of the familiar names and not-so-familiar names that uh, will be lining up for, for the Seagulls this year. Uh, let's start on the offensive side yeah. of the ball. You've got some veterans in the offensive yeah. backfield. Oh, no doubt about it. I think the first person you have to start with is Tony Ellis. Uh, Tony is a uh, person who rushed for over 1,200 yards last year. He's, uh, he's probably in better shape this year than he was last year, believe it or not. So I'm expecting, again, another exciting year for Tony Ellis. And, and Reggie Boyce, to counteract that, you know, he's a, he's a kid that is our bruiser in the backfield, and he can also he also has speed along with uh, with this uh, weight and all. So we feel good about those two guys back there. And obviously the quarterback, Mac Millay, is returning for his second year, and he had an outstanding season as far as I was concerned. And, uh, so we feel real good about those guys in the backfield. What kind of things can a quarterback do for you in the second year as opposed to the first year? Well, you know, the first first thing is that he understands the system a little better, and I think that's extremely important. Uh, you know, he didn't even start the first game of last year, and he finished up the last nine games, and he still was learning, you know. And uh, we took some time in the offseason to try to, you know, just get him adjusted even more. And uh, it seems that it worked out. He worked out real hard in the summer and uh, he feels more comfortable with the system right now, and I think that's probably the big advantage from, from last year. Well, you mentioned the running backs and the success that uh, they had last year, the anticipation of what kind of year they're going to have. Uh, tell us about the, the big boys on the offensive line that will help yeah. pave the way. No doubt about it. I mean, we lost a couple good, solid kids uh, from the offensive line, Steve Lee being one of those kids, and, uh, but we, we felt we had a pretty good recruiting class, and uh, we have to start with Bo Ridgeway. You know, he's a big kid. He's the biggest kid on the line. He's a he's a returning kid and, and had a real good season last year. And Ben McDowell is also another big kid. He's about 280, and, and Bo Bo runs about 310. So we feel good about those kids uh, returning. And I have a couple newcomers. Uh, Nick Dester, a big kid out of Northern Virginia. He's he's uh, someone that uh, we're excited about. Uh, he's going to start at that right tackle, and he carries carries about 290 pounds as well. So we feel good about those guys up front and. Um, you know, we're just expecting some real good things from the offensive side of the football. Rumor has it that the Seagulls might be throwing the ball a little bit more this year. Uh, tell us maybe who's going to be on the uh, receiving end of those passes. Well, I think I think we want to probably probably start with Kevin Belt. You know, Kevin Belt is a returning kid. He he uh, set out last year with a few injuries and, and some other personal problems, but he's back now. I think he's the fastest kid that we have. And and uh, Jeff Boltler is, is another kid that uh, brings some experience from returning last year. So we feel good about those two kids. Uh, Lorenzo Parker, a new kid that's coming in, is going to help us also. Our main goal uh, this year was to be to go a little more vertical uh, with our passing game. We wanted to be a little more multiple because we feel people are going to come after those guys in the backfield. And we want to make sure we at least have uh, another dimension to the offense. And so we'll start with multiple sets offensively. And, uh, and then we'll just go ahead and try to go a little more vertical passing the football so we can open up the, uh, the offense even more. Go to the defensive side. Uh, any discussion probably has to start with a three-year uh, starter at linebacker, first team all-conference, yeah. Pat Brannon. No doubt about it. Pat is uh, he's a great leader. Uh, he's, a, he's a positive role model. Uh, all the kids look up to him. Uh, he, he's obviously a captain of the football team. And uh, again, I'm expecting great things from Paul, I'm, uh, from, sorry, from Pat. And, uh, you know, he's, he's probably going to lead the team in, in tackles again, so we feel real good about that. And I mentioned Paul because I was thinking about Paul Duffy, our, our defensive lineman, who was also a captain. Uh, he's had an outstanding summer, and he's much stronger. He's a little bigger, and uh, he's going to really do some good things for us inside uh, doing the interior part of the line on the defensive side of the football. You've got one other starter there on the defensive line, a returning starter. You want to mention him as well? Well, we have, we have the... the uh, uh, Tom McCarthy? <laughs> I was thinking defensive end, and we, we Tom Tom is uh, probably someone that is, is really surprising simply because of he was a little thin when I first came in. He was about 225 pounds, and now he's about 240. He's he's looking very very solid right now, and uh, he's he's quicker than anyone else on that defensive line. So we expect some good things from him, uh, at least uh, from from the, against the run as well as the pass. You know, he's probably one of the first guys to get to the quarterback among all those guys. Well, now we can maybe uh, highlight some of the new uh, new faces, especially on defense. You got uh, quite a, uh, quite a bit of uh, young influence there. Yeah. Tell us yeah. maybe some of the, the the younger players, the newcomers that yeah. will be making an impact right away. Well, the first person that comes to my mind is Brad DeHaven. Uh, Brad, another Northern Virginia kid. Uh, he came in. He he definitely had a great preseason, and and uh, he stepped right on into a starting position. And we're expecting some real good things from him. Uh, we we have a couple young kids in the secondary, Pat Barnes and. And Chris Barr, you know, those are two kids that, you know, they may not, may not be big in stature, but they are 
uh, very, very quick, and they, they're very intelligent kids, and, and they can really get the job done. So uh, we feel good about those kids. Uh, Nick Good Malloy is a defensive end that will probably be starting as, a, as another freshman on the, on the, on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, he cares about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and so we're, we're expecting some good things from him as well. Uh, but we're, we're going to have some youth on the defense side of the ball, but I feel good about the talent uh, that we have and the speed that we have on defense. Hopefully it can make up for, for some of that youth. The last uh, area, and I know you take great pride in this, is special teams. So maybe you can tell us a bit uh, about how special teams are shaping up. Uh, special teams is extremely important as, as far as I'm concerned. I, I think it's just that extra edge that, that a program needs. And, 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 and I want to be in charge of special teams because I think kids tend to pay a little more attention to the head football coach when he's involved with special teams, and, and that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, Paul Jacko is a returning place kicker, and I tell you, he is doing a much better job than last year. He's stronger. He worked extremely hard in the summer. I feel very good about uh, the, the results that we're going to see this year from, from Paul Jacko. Uh, we're, we're looking at a few guys as far as returning to football uh, because, we're, again, we're, youth, we're young in that, in that area, but... Uh, I think our cover team is going to be very solid. Uh, we, we feel good about those guys, and and uh, hopefully overall we feel that special team is going to give us an edge in every every football game. Uh, Coach will also talk about the changing face of the conference a little bit. This is the fourth year for the Atlantic Central Football Conference, but a little bit of a change over during the, the course of the offseason. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us a little bit. Yeah, well, we're a member of the Atlantic Central Football Conference, and uh, you know before I arrived, uh, we had seven football teams in the conference, and uh, it, it just so happened several of the schools, uh, Firm, Shawan, Methodist, uh, a couple of those guys just decided to go into the Dixie Conference, which uh, it makes a whole lot of sense because all the other sports are involved with the Dixie Conference, and, and, the, and their presidents and the NADs felt it would be a, a smooth transition to do that football-wise. But in order for us to maintain the Atlanta Central Football Conference, which I have a lot of respect for, uh, we just had to maintain four solid football teams, and, and, and we have those teams right now. And, uh, we feel very good about the, the nucleus of the, of the uh, conference. Uh, we do have some interest from other people, and uh, hopefully we can, we can increase the, uh, the numbers in the conference in, in years to come. Uh, right now it's, it's, it's ourselves, uh, Wesley, Frostburg, and, and uh, Newport News Apprentice. Uh, so we feel very good. We, we still have a conference, and I think that was the main goal, to make sure we maintain that name. I know a highlight on the schedule is always now the last date with Frostburg State Conference game, as you mentioned. It's also the third year of the Regents Cup, played uh, once again this year at RFK Stadium uh, in Washington, D.C. on November 10. That's always a special game now. Uh, a very exciting opportunity for the kids. Uh, anytime they, they participate in a professional stadium, it's, it has to be a plus. I mean, I think it's exciting for, for the staff as well. Uh, and we have a great time. Uh, and the kids really enjoy it. And, and it's something that I think is going to cause at least implement a lot of interest from the community, uh, even in D.C., as well as uh, at one time we was in uh, Baltimore at the PSI Net Stadium. But uh, it's, it's something that's great for the kids. Uh, it's a type of rivalry that we're trying to put together, similar to a Texas, Texas A&M, mm -hmm. end of the season type rivalry. And it, it has uh, grown up to his, uh, to his name. You know, I, I think we, we've done some good things. Frostburg has done some good things there. Right now it's a 1-1 one -one tie. And <laughs> so this year is the tie break, and uh, obviously Salzburg is looking to to break that tie with a win. Coach, uh, safe to say that you're pretty excited about the season. I'm very excited. I feel very comfortable uh, this year, I, probably than the past couple years because it's, you know, there's a lot of a lot of changes, a lot of transition going on, and now I, I finally feel that everything is pretty much in place. Uh, we Again, we do have some young people, but I, I think we have some good young people, and so we feel very good about the season. We're going to stay focused, and uh, you know, hopefully the young kids can grow up very fast, and, and if they do, we, we're going to see a lot of success. So uh, we anticipate a winning season, and uh, we're going to work hard to, to get that done. Well, we certainly wish you well. We thank you for taking a few minutes thank out you. of uh, your practice schedule. And we'd like to remind everybody that every Seagull uh, game this year, home and away, will be carried live on WICO 1320 AM radio. So that's live coverage of every game, home and away, uh, here in Salisbury on WICO radio. And we'll be right back after this with another preview. My head volleyball coach Margie Knight, who's beginning her fifth season here with the Seagulls. Margie's a former standout player with the Salisbury, Salisbury State College, 
right. and uh, a member of the university's Hall of Fame. Uh, Margie, thanks for taking a few minutes sure. to join us this morning. Sure thing. Seagulls had a great year last year, won the conference championship, right. went to the NCAA tournament down in Atlanta. That's got to build a lot of momentum for this season. Oh, yeah. The way we finished last year was uh, excellent. We were kind of going over some bumps during the middle of the season, and our team stayed together, no finger pointing, and I think we really surged at the end, upset the number 20 team in the country to get to the NCAA, so it was a great finish for us. Well, we lose a couple of starters right. from, from that uh, yes, team, a couple of uh, real veterans, but you've got some others back. Let's start with some of the kids that uh, we'll be counting on as veterans from last year. Oh, well, no doubt, Kara Kowalski is going to lead us offensively and defensively. She's a four-year starter. Uh, from York, PA. She set the defensive uh, record her sophomore year for the most digs in a career. She's going to blow that record apart this year. And she's shooting at uh, two other records this year, the all-time uh, service aces, which I believe she's only about 20 behind. And she's going for uh, all-time kills, uh, which will break Donna Hudson's record, who graduated last right. year. And she needs about 130 to do that. I think Kara, they're certainly well within her reach. Who are some of the other offensive weapons other than Kara? Uh, Sam Cree hands back. She had a season-ending injury last year, and you can tell she's been extremely hungry at practice. She's looking great. Great. By far, uh, she's looking the most polished of all our players here in preseason. Uh, Jessica Freeman, another middle hitter, will return. A 5'11 young lady from the Severna Park area went to South River High School, and we're expecting big things out of her. Excellent blocker, very, very quick for 5'11, and uh, we expect her to hit a few more people in the face this year. Now, we talked about losing a couple of starters. Right. One of them was a setter, Katie Cork, That's four correct. years. Who right. are we looking at as a new setter? Well, we've got three young ladies uh, vying for that position. Uh, returners, Monica McLaughlin, she's a junior for us, and uh, she's been our serving specialist and a backup setter for us. We also have senior uh, returner Sarah Teeter who will uh, try to get one of those starting setting positions. And we have a newcomer, Rachel uh, Bakedel from the Hagerstown area. She's a junior college transfer. Um, she may set some, but I tell you what, the girl can put the ball down. She hits hard. So we're, we're kind of trying to figure where Rachel's going to be in our lineup. So Rachel's a newcomer. Any others that we'll see throughout the lineup this year? Uh, well. Are you talking newcomers? Newcomers, or, yeah. Uh, newcomers, I think Kim Men are a freshman. I believe she, I know she was the most valuable player for her team at North Carolina. I'm not sure where she was as a conference player. Uh, I'm sure a first team selection. What a passer. Mm -hmm. The girl is passing the ball on the money. Uh, she was a hitter at, at her school, but at 5'5", five five, she's probably not going <laughs> to see much time in our front line. Um, and she, she'll probably be the, oh, and Jen Allen, I'm sorry. We have a six foot, <laughs> how could I remember? <laughs> forget her. Jen Allen's coming to us. She's transferring from York, PA, and um, she's a 6'1", middle hitter, right side, and I expect her to put a big stopping on a lot of uh, our opponent's outside hitters. How about backcourt defensive specialist? Uh, well, no doubt. Courtney Dunloff is uh, just the gutsiest player that goes on that court. Uh, that girl put herself uh, in front of a cannon and still dig it, and, and she did a couple of times last year. In fact, she had probably the two turn, she had the turnaround dig of uh, the season last year against Catholic, which I think really propelled us on our winning streak. Um, we also will have Suzanne Powell, a local young lady, um, who spent a lot of time working very, very hard last year, and I think once she breaks into our lineup this year, it's going to be hard to get her out. We'll, um, she's a, a great hitter, not so much in the backboard, and I apologize for kind of skipping through your question there, but she uh, should do real well. And uh, we also returned Kim Sheedy and Lauren Briggs, um, two sophomore outside hitters. They played a big part in our season last year, and I expected them to see quite a bit of time. Mentioned the conference. Seagulls were the conference champion last year, second time in three years. Right. Um, give us an assessment of the conference season as you see it for this year. Well, I, I think uh, with every year in volleyball, it, it's uh, just a dogfight right down to the end. I, I think that most of the teams are able to win it. I would say out of our eight teams in the conference, probably seven of them have a real shot at winning mm -hmm. the conference championship. Certainly, Catholic will be uh, coming as the number one return. They did not. I think they had lost one player off that team, and, and they were 36 and four last year. So I look for them to be the team that's going to be upset by us again. <laughs> uh, Marymount is always strong. Uh, Beth Ann Wilson does a wonderful job there, and D Conway down at Mary Washington always has a tough team. Sue Dumar at uh, York uh, has a marvelous team. So I, I think things are going to be uh, a real hard fight for us all the way through. And of course, Gallaudet, our, our nemesis. In the, um, 
in the conference uh, always has a great fight against us. Well, in addition to the Capital Athletic Conference, the Seagulls play in a number of tournaments throughout right. the season. Some great tournaments. Uh, highlight a couple of those for us. Uh, well, we're, we're going to go back to some tournaments we've been playing in for uh, quite a few years, and that's the Gettysburg Tournament, and we'll go up to Western Maryland. Two very tough. In fact, I looked at the Western Maryland, uh, the teams that are in that, and I went, well, there's no easy matches for anyone, so that, that's going to be a really tough uh, tournament. We're starting off at Hood College tournament, and that's something new for us. And I think um, it'll be really good since we're going to have so many different role players this year. It'll be a nice way to start our season before we go up to Gettysburg. Uh, we host two home tournaments, mm -hmm. uh, but then we go to uh, for a first for our program as we're flying up to um, uh, Lewiston, Maine to play in the Bates College tournament, and that's 12 teams from the New England region that we'll be playing against. So that'll be great for us to see some different teams than we normally do. Exposure think. to a new area for oh, the first yeah, time. Oh, yeah, I think it'll be real good for us. Uh, in addition to the tournaments, um, there's some changes in volleyball this year, rules changes specifically, if you can highlight a couple of those. Yeah, uh, if you come, the game's going to be very, very different. It's rally scoring to 30 for the first four games and to 15 for the fifth game, which has been the way it, uh, that has been the way it is. Um, the last couple years, but the rally scoring to 30 is a whole different game. So every every point <laughs> counts, and there's no side out in volleyball anymore. So I think that's going to be real interesting. They also have the let serve, which now if mm -hmm. the if the serve hits the net and goes over, you continue to play, and that is very tough because all these young ladies have been trained that that's a dead ball, and so they're really having trouble adjusting to that, but we're going to use it to our advantage, I think. Do the rules change, uh, specifically the scoring change, does that change the way you coach, the, the strategy of the match? I think it's certainly going to change when I call timeouts. Um, if you get down by nine, I, I think it's going to be remarkable for you to come back, um, especially late in a game. So I think the idea is to use your timeouts early, uh, use your substitutions mm -hmm. as often as possible, and I uh, hope that you're up by five or six when you hit 25, and then you should be a shoe in to win the match. Great. Well, Coach, we wish you the best okay. of luck. Uh, hopefully another championship, and uh, here's a look at the Seagull schedule as uh, we cut away from you. We're joined now by head coach Don Chamberlain of the field hockey team. The field hockey program is one of the most successful here at Salisbury University, and Coach Chamberlain's been a big part of that over the last uh, 13 years. Coach, um, welcome, and um, we're looking forward Thank to having you. you fill us in on um, what's happening on the field hockey field and, and how you're expecting things to go this fall. Well, we're looking forward to another great season. Um, you know, we, we've had tremendous output the last uh, few years. We've got uh, six CAC championships behind our belt right now and um, a Final Four appearance last year and uh, certainly some of the goals this year of our team is to uh, a repeat of that and get a little bit further. Uh, we'd, we'd like to play for a national championship and uh, hopefully uh, we can achieve that goal. Um, we're coming back with all of our starters from last year's squad so the team's very excited this year and, and uh, the opening polls preseason right now have us ranked number two in the country behind William Smith who was our national championship team last year so you know we've got uh, a, a lot to shoot for and we also have a little bit of pressure um, you know getting back to the type of year that we had last year but I think with the team that we have uh, we can achieve that. Well, it's a veteran team. We mentioned the Final Four last year. Uh, Seagulls enjoyed an uh, outstanding season, actually hosted the Final Four here in Salisbury in November. Um, finished tied for third in the nation. As you said, picked the uh, preseason number two. The taste of success last year with so many veterans back, is that a motivation uh, for this year? Yes, yeah, certainly it is. Um, you know, they got that that uh, little bit of Final Four mm -hmm. fever in them now, and you know they know they they know what they're capable of accomplishing. They know what it's like to be at the Final Four, and with that experience, and um, you know being able to have everybody back and, and no holes to fill, I think um, you know they're excited that they can achieve that. Well, let's mention some of the names. Uh, we'll start with uh, the girls who get probably most of the attention. Is the ones <laughs> that put the ball in the goal. Uh, tell us about the forwards. Uh, you've got a lot of firepower back. Yeah, we we have Jill Presser, who is one of our leading scorers back. Um, playing on the left side of the field for us and Marie Brewington, Lindsay Elliott, Kristen Seaton, you know, they're all um, 
you know, have a lot of experience on the forward line and have put in some goals for us this year or last year. So, you know, we're looking to them to be some big scorers for us. Um, and, you know, and we've got a great line behind them that's very capable of scoring as well. Um, we have Tara Webster, All-American, returning for us, playing in the center position. Um, and also um, Katie Richardson is playing in the midfield and Megan Bailey. So, you know, we have our three strong midfielders back. We've got a lot of good speed there and a lot of good stick work. And um, they can all score goals as well. So we got a real push in terms of offensive striking power. So we're, we're real happy about that. And then, um, you know, moving back to the backfield, you know, we have experience again. Um, you know, they were young, but they got a lot of good experience last year. You know, we have Joe, who's, who's probably our veteran leader on defense, and um, Joanna Fenske, she's our goalkeeper, and she's an All-American goalkeeper, and, and she's returning uh, as a senior this year. Um, we have Melissa Dugan, who is a junior player for us this year, and Jackie Alberti, who's also playing back there for us. So, you know, they're going to do some nice things for us. And Lindsey Bard kind of plays a little bit of midfield and back for us, and um, she also scores some goals on the corners for us. So, you know, we've got a great defense. Um, to, to support the line that uh, should give us a, some good punch. Always have some talented newcomers. Maybe you can mention a few that you've uh, that have stood out through the preseason for you. Well, we're real excited about um, Tara's little sister, Melissa Webster. Um, you know, she's a, just a stand-up player, and, and she's going to come out. She's going to see a lot of time this year, and um, you know, we're looking to use her right away. And she can go in in the midfield position or the forward position. We could probably even put her in the backfield. She's very skilled, um, and she's very poised, and she plays above and beyond her ex years of experience. So, you know, she's going to come in and do a real nice job for us this year, and, and we're real excited for that. Um, we got Jess Dixon, um, who's a forward for us, who I, I think um, has had a nice preseason, and, and she's going to do some nice things for us. Um, Jocelyn Anderson is a back who I think can come in and do something. But uh, one of the big surprises, um, you know, is, is the way that our sophomore players have mm -hmm. come back in. And, and one in particular, Sarah Salvier, has just come in in outstanding shape and just really worked hard to hone her skills this summer. And she is looking really good. And she's going to get some time this year, and she can help us out all over the field. So, you know, I'm really excited about what they did in the off season. I think, um, you know, we had a, a, a really uh, – outstanding trip to Europe this summer and we got to play some of the best teams in the world over there and you know that really um, you know gave us a little more experience it's going to help us out throughout the year. Well we mentioned the conference uh, the Capital Athletic Conference the Seagulls have won the championship the past six years um, mentioned maybe some of the non-conference games that are big ones for, for your team. Well, you know, we always have College of New Jersey. That, that's a, a big show for us. Um, this year we play them up on their turf. So it's going to be a little different playing on AstroTurf. But, um, you know, that will be a good game for us. Rowan also in that same New Jersey league is going to be a tough game. But, um, you know, we have one right away, and that's Messiah. And that, that's always a, a big determining factor for, um, you know, where we're going to be in a season and, and what we need to work on because they're always a strong team. Sounds like you're excited, ready to go. I am very excited. You know, when we went to uh, Europe uh, in June, you know, we wish we could have started the season then. You know, we were fired up and ready to go. It's been a long time coming for this, and, and we're ready to go. Well, we wish you the best of luck, and thanks Thank for you. joining us for a few minutes. Thank you. We'll be back after we take a look at the Seagulls field hockey schedule. We're joined now by head coach of the men's and women's cross country team, Jim Jones. Jim starting his third year here with the Seagulls, and uh, I'm sure very excited to get started. Oh, definitely, definitely. I think this is going to be a real exciting year for for both teams, particularly the men uh, being defending champions. Well, uh, Jim mentioned defending champions. The Seagulls, uh, the men, won the uh, Capital Athletic Conference championship last year, as well as the Mason Dixon championship. The women were runner-up. So um, let's start with the men, since we've uh, mentioned their championships. Uh, why don't you highlight, Jim, some of the top runners we'll be hearing about this year? Well, I think we've got a good core of guys back. Uh, uh, you look at um, uh, you know a, a few of our the key individuals from last year's team that are going to be re rejoining us. Uh, Jeremy Beal, who was the CAC Rookie of the Year his freshman year, he's now a junior, uh, was in the top uh, five last year in the CAC meet. He's going to provide a lot of uh, leadership for us. Uh, a couple other people, Kyle Reagan was was all conference. Uh, last year as a freshman, was one of the top freshmen. He's back, uh, doing very well. Chris Mason, uh, not all, not he wasn't all conference, but he was in track and field. He 
who was second in the steeplechase, right behind a transfer, Andy Morocco from Charleston Southern, who transferred in midstream uh, for us. Uh, I think Tom Sterling uh, has also done a, quite a bit of work over the summer. I think he'll contribute with, not only with his athletic ability, but his leadership. And then we have a nice uh, transfer, Steve Jacobs, is a brother of Amy Jacobs, uh, who holds a school record for us in the pool vault uh, on the women's side in track and field. He transferred from UMBC, which is a nice, uh, nice addition. But we have a lot of freshmen. Uh, they make up the majority part of our team, and I think there's some key individuals there as well that uh, will contribute as they learn the, the, the longer race. Tell us on the, on the women's side then, same thing, some of the, some of the top runners we're going to be hearing about through the course of the season. Uh, here again, the women's team is quite a bit smaller than, the, than men's. In men we have 17 and, and women only 6, but they're good quality 6. Uh, we have 3 freshmen and then uh, 3 upperclassmen. Diana Hampel I think is refocused, uh, put in a great deal of work over the summertime. I think she's ready to really have a breakthrough year after uh, some disappointment, some injuries that have held her back. But she's healthy, she's strong, she's going to be uh, a big contributor for us. Uh, Rebecca Lyons, who's a sophomore from last year, did very, very well for us uh, in cross country, but uh, really kind of came into her own in track, had a great work ethic during the summertime, put in the miles she needed to do. To do. And then finally, Kristen Camp, uh, who, who I think is, is uh, uh, really going to have an outstanding year. She was a CAC champion in the 1500. Uh, has really made a, a big leap in track, and I think that'll they'll show through in cross country this fall. Uh, cross country is uh, kind of a unique sport in that uh, these runners really have have to train all summer long. They have mm -hmm. to do much of their preparation for the season before they get here. Right. Um, how do you monitor that, or how do you guide them through that process when they're scattered all over the, the states and, and the different areas? Well, it, it's it's a little bit difficult, but I think uh, with some good organization, we send out workout packets. Uh, at the beginning of the summer, they follow those. We keep in good contact through email and also the phone uh, and, and kind of gauge them that way. But they understand coming into the program, their ha half their training has to be done during the summer. In, in college, it's a lot different than high school. You cannot uh, uh, get it done two weeks before the season starts. It has to start back in June. Well, as we tape this, we're just days away from the first meet of the season. Uh, give me your assessment, Coach. Well, it's going to be a very good meet out at, at Winter Place Park this Friday. Um, uh, we have the Naval Academy, men and women. Uh, the women are, are joining the men this year, which is exciting. Christopher Newport University, they're always a big rival in the Mason-Dixon Conference for us, so we'll get to see early on how we stack up against a very good Division I program and one of the better Division I, three programs year in and year out. In addition to that, meet, uh, tell us maybe about a couple of the others that uh, are highlights during the course of the season. Well, of course, the conference championships we always focus on. Uh, we go to some big meets early on, uh, Lebanon Valley up in uh, Pennsylvania, and then the New York University meet. Uh, th there's going to be about 45 schools. That's really the best meet east of the Mississippi for Division Three athletes. So we'll get to see where we're at, uh, men and women-wise, nationally, not only regionally uh, at that meet. But the key meets are for us the Mason-Dixon Championship, which sets us up then for the CAC, which is the most important meet. And hopefully, hopefully this year, and that's one of our goals, is to go on and, and fare very well at regionals and go on to the national championship. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck this coming season. I uh, hope it's another championship run all the way through the year for both teams. And uh, as we leave, we'll take a look at the Seagulls cross-country schedule for this coming fall. We are joined now by head coach Jerry DiBartolo of the men's soccer team. Jerry is the dean of Seagull Coaches, starting his 20th season as a head coach this fall. Coach, glad to have you with us. Glad to be here. Back-to-back uh, -back outstanding seasons, back-to-back -back championships in 99 uh, and 2000 in the Capital Athletic Conference, back-to-back -back appearances in the NCAA tournament, ranked 24th now in the preseason, a lot of expectations and a lot of success in recent seasons. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, we... Uh, all our hard work over the many years paid off the last couple of years. Uh, we made kind of an unexpected run uh, in 99. Uh, we thought we had a good chance to win the CAC conference. Uh, we'd been to the championship game for five, six years in a row there and had lost in the finals every year. Uh, and then once we got our chance to go into the NCAA tournament, we felt real good about uh, what we could do and we made it all the way to the final eight. 
Uh, last year, we probably even had higher expectations of the team uh, based on the number of players we had returning. Um, and uh, we exited in the second round of the tournament, kind of disappointing. So I think that gives us a little bit of uh, incentive coming into this year that uh, we return a number of players again. Uh, I think we'd like to uh, hopefully win our conference and have another shot at the NCAA tournament. Well, you mentioned uh, lots of returning players. The Seagulls were second in the nation in scoring last year, a very offensive uh, group. And maybe we can start by mentioning some of the kids that will be back putting a ball in the goal. Sure. Well, I can tell you it's very unusual for us to have be that ranked that high in scoring. Uh, we've always been a defensive-oriented team. But last year and the last couple of years, we've just been scoring some goals. And hopefully that will continue this year. Um, but we returned four uh, of our six top scorers from last year's team. Uh, led by uh, two juniors uh, in terms of where they were on the point total last year, Matt Bowman, an all-conference player, uh, and C.R. Krause, an all-conference player, as well as an all-regional player. Uh, I expect great things from both of them. They're very different players. Uh, on top of that, we return our third leading scorer all-time in Paul Kelly, also a three-time all-conference um, player and a two-time all-regional player. Was not one last year, did not get picked last year. If Paul has himself a real good year, he could end up the number one scorer all time for Salisbury. So uh, big expectations for, for him. And then a freshman who played quite a bit last year, Johnny Muto, uh, who ended up with uh, a few goals and a number of assists. I think uh, coming off a knee surgery last year, he should be uh, in real good shape this year for um, uh, having a, a real good season. Well, the quality and the depth doesn't stop, uh, stop on the front line. The midfield is uh, pretty stacked again. Well, I think we have uh, two very distinct parts of our midfield this year. We have uh, what we call wide midfielders, and we return all four of our wide midfielders from our last couple of years, actually. Uh, our wide midfielders are um, Adam Young, one of our co-tri-captains this year, uh, as well as Bernie Edwards, Joe Isco, and Derek Chappell. Uh, all four of those guys last year scored some goals. All four of those guys are great wide midfielders. They're all pretty fit. They're all pretty quick. Uh, they get up and down the field well. Uh, they service the ball well. They attack players well. So. Uh, that is clearly our strength. In the center of the field, we're really trying some new people this year. We've got a uh, transfer student by the name of Danny Meehan uh, from the shore, went to Queen Anne's High School. Uh, we'll hopefully be uh, able to make the adjustment to be our attacking midfielder, free midfielder. Uh, we also have Mark Calabretta, who played a little bit last year as our uh, attacking midfielder. And in a defensive midfield, we're trying Connor Rector, who was a uh, back slash midfielder last year for us. Played a lot, but never really started many matches for us and uh, a freshman by the name of Danny Later. So it's young and old, young mm -hmm. and old, I'd say, in the midfield, but I think we're hoping for some consistency there. Tell us about the back line. Our back four returns intact. I'm real happy about that. Uh, last year, we had four new backs that started for us from the year before. We were a little apprehensive about what might happen there. This year, we have all four of them back. Uh, we have Evan Nostalski, one of our sweepers, uh, Mike Stein, one of our tri-captains as a marking back, Darren LaRocque, one of our uh, tri-captains as a stopper, and Brooke Riggerman, a local kid from Seaford, as our other marking back. Uh, Darren was an all-regional player last year. He's been one for three years, an all-conference player. Uh, last year, again, um, he is probably the, the heart and soul of that defensive unit in terms of work rate. Uh, Evan Nostalski is our anchor back there, is our sweeper. Um, and I think that those four guys are going to make a real good nucleus. We also have two very good new players this year with us, a fellow by the name of Danny Threadkill and a fellow by the name of Marcus Hunkley, uh, both uh, with high expectations, and I'm hoping to get them some good quality time uh, back there. And we have a number of other reserve players who are playing in the back for us. I think they're going to be a, it's going to be a great group for us back there. Well, it uh, sounds like the one question mark left is uh, the goal where you've got to replace uh, an All-American goalie, and uh, tell us what's happening there. Well, we have uh, four goalkeepers in camp, three from last year, one uh, new player. Uh, the uh, player looks like is probably going to get the nod as a starting position is going to be Tom Paparunas. Been with us for two years, uh, actually sat out last year as a red shirt and will uh, hopefully start for us in, in the goal as a junior this year. Uh, we're also uh, very excited about uh, the other three players. They're all working real hard, Phil Manna, Tom Palizzi, and Jesse Woody. And I think that it's a toss up between any one of those three in terms of who's going to be number two uh, and who could actually go into number one. Uh, it's a tough position to fill, you know, replacing an All-American. It's tough to recruit uh, when you've got a number of returning players back, but we're doing the best job we can back there. And I think Tom, uh, Jesse, uh, Phil, or um, uh, other Tom will be great for yeah. us back there. Well, size up the uh, conference for us. Uh, as we mentioned, Salisbury is the two-time defending champion. Uh, who do we got to beat to, de to defend that crown? Well, who's on our tail? I think our, the, the, the best... Uh, 
opponents in the conference are probably Mary Washington, very, very good team, very strong team. We'll have another good season this year. They return a number of very good players. Uh, that's going to be a very important match for us. Your college uh, graduated some players, but they got a pretty good crop of new players, and they're going to be a good team. St. Mary's is a relatively uh, senior and junior laden team, so those guys have played together for a couple of years. Uh, they did exit the first round of the uh, CAC conference last year, but I think they have a chance to go pretty far this year. And um, the other team that's always a surprise team to me is Catholic. Very strong defensive team, struggles to score goals, but we've always had trouble scoring many goals against them. I think those are the four teams that are, are really the four teams that will give us the greatest amount of difficulty. But our game is a very unusual game. If we don't play well in any given contest, anybody can beat us. It doesn't matter who it is. Well, we certainly wish you the best. We look forward to another outstanding season on the uh, soccer fields, and um, hopefully we'll be talking about postseason. I hope so. Thanks. We'll take a look at the Seagulls men's soccer schedule, and then we'll be right back. Welcome back as we start our final segment of the Seagull Fall Sports Preview. We're joined now by the newest member of the coaching staff, Mr. Jim Nestor, who oversees the women's soccer program. Jim, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Jim, you're in a unique position where you inherit a team that had a, an outstanding year last year. 20 wins, one loss, two ties. Seagulls won the CAC championship, advanced to the final eight of the NCAA tournament. I guess that put some uh, expectations upon you as a first year coach. Yes, we have high expectations. We definitely have our work cut out for us this year. A lot of teams will be gunning for us, uh, knowing that uh, they want to get revenge on us for uh, probably how bad we beat them last year. <laughs> well, the good news is you've got a, a core of veterans who all were part of that last year that are back, and maybe you can headline some of the kids for us as we, uh, as you know, you've seen them in the preseason. Let's start up front with the forwards. Well, we got. Um, Cindy Maxfield up front uh, has been doing a great job working for us. And then we have Kathleen uh, Tideman who is coming in and doing a great job. We've had some injuries, you know, in this preseason. So it's going to be seeing who comes off that bench first. Um, who's going to be, um, you know, filling in to helping out up front. How's the midfield been looking? Strong. Uh, good core. Uh, the whole attack, the uh, whole core is uh, coming back, that whole unit. Uh, again, some injuries in the preseason, so we're going to be looking to, again, have people come off the bench to help us out early on until we can uh, get, all get healthy. But it's really strong with uh, uh, Mursky in the middle. Um, I'm sorry, not Mursky. Uh, Amber on the outside, Joy on the outside, and Christine Lillis and Meredith uh, on that inside. That's a, it's a really strong group. All veterans, all, all uh, core part of last year's team. Yes. You mentioned Ellen. Uh, she's going to... Uh, uh, She's the anchor of the defense. Yes, I mean, Alan stands out for me. I jump right to my head. She's down on the middle. Uh, she plays sweeper for us. Uh, a great leader in the back, a, a captain also. She really controls them with the communication in the back. Who else on, along the back side uh, in terms of the, the, de the defensive core? we got Kelly Knudsen on the outside. We have uh, Maria also out there. And then that stopper spot is someone we graduated. We're looking to fill right now. Rachel Tanzi is stepping up very well. Any freshmen and newcomers that uh, have impressed you through the preseason? Through the preseason, you know, we have four new freshmen coming out. Um, a lot of young, young players. Uh, we have Dana Olson, who's a transfer actually in. She's going to be seeing time. We have um, Thea is coming in, a great athlete who's going to be playing in that midfield defensive back area, really. And the big uh, question, uh, very similar to the men's team, uh, graduated uh, four-year starter and goal. You've got uh, you've got. A spot to fill, how's that been coming along? We have three players you know, battling for that spot, which is, is coming along great. Our, the goalkeeper that did graduate is here helping us out. So um, we have Gina that's coming in. I played a couple years ago. Uh, hopefully we can keep our goalkeepers healthy, and I think uh, things will take care of itself. Anybody stand out at this point? Uh, Gina right now and Kareem is uh, battling for that starting spot, and, and Jessica's really working hard back there also. Uh, any unique challenges for you as a first-year coach? You're inheriting a team of, of veteran players and, and maybe adjusting the philosophy, the coaching style a little bit. Uh, how has that been going? It's been going well. I've been you know, trying to you know, bring my style on gradually instead of jumping in and getting them all off skew because you know it's a great returning group. I wasn't looking to come in here and changing up things. I mean, the chemistry worked well, and I wanted to keep it rolling the way it has been. Expectations for this year? 
hopefully to be able to repeat what they've done in the in the past and be successful obviously one but mainly repeat as the conference champions to get that automatic bid and then take you know as we go through the season one game at a time well we wish, uh, wish you the best of luck Jim thank you very much and we'll be uh, take a let's take a look at the Seagulls women's soccer schedule and we'll be right back Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've enjoyed this look at the Seagull Fall Sports Preview. Lots of excitement coming up in the coming months. We hope that you'll come out and join us and catch the action live in person on campus. We also hope that you'll stay tuned to Access 26. A number of these games will be shown live and on tape on Access 26 in the coming months. Once again, for the rest of the coaching staff, I'm Paul O'Hanion, and we hope to see you on campus.